Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the narratives visual. Now, we're going to be taking a little bit of a detour from what we've done thus far. This visual is actually one that is developed by a third party, like many of them are. But this one you won't find in the Power BI Custom Visuals gallery. Nor will you find it on the Office Store like we've been looking at previously. This is actually one that you'll need to go to the Narrative Science website to take a look at. Pretty interesting visual. Basically, what it does is it makes an attempt to automatically deliver what you would almost expect an analyst to write up for you. So if you were to give your data over to an analyst and want them to build a report for you, that's basically what Narratives does for you. It automatically gives you a text paragraph or bullet format of interesting information about your data. And so it looks at the information in your data set and it tries to do some analysis against it. And basically what it's doing is it's helping you find some hidden insights in your data that you might not find otherwise. Now it, does only, it is only supported in English, I should mention. And one other thing that's definitely worth mentioning, especially if you are concerned about like HIPAA compliance or you have sensitive data, it does send this information over to the narrative science servers to be able to analyze and create these narrative stories. So be aware of that. Your information, your data can be sent to this customer or this uh, partner. But what they do note, if you look at any of their frequently asked questions, is they only send the information that you see in the narrative itself, in the story, meaning that they roll up the information to a higher level. For some, that's not good enough, but you should be aware that there is this capability, and what it is doing behind the scenes is sending some of your information over to the narrative science servers to do this processing. So let's go ahead and now take a look at where you can go download it. I remember I mentioned this is not part of the Office Store, or it's not also part of the Visuals Gallery. This is actually going to be one that you have to go to the narrative site. I had the link for that right here a few moments ago. So you're going to have to go to powerbi.narrativescience.com to find it. And so let's go ahead and do that together. All right, so if you were to go to powerbi.narrativescience.com, the first thing you get is actually a sign-up link here. And it'll ask you for a business email and a little bit of trickiness here. As soon as you click in there, it actually asks you for more information than that as well. It'll ask for your company and your first and last name. Obviously, they're a company that's going to provide this service, but they want some information from you. So just be aware of that as you give your information here. It is being sent to this company, and they probably will reach out to you. But you'll be able to gauge here after you see what this does whether or not it's worth it. The other thing that you'll find here is as you go over to explore a little bit more about this, this tool, you can actually go to their site and navigate up and find underneath their solutions. They have Power BI services in here underneath the platform as well. You can kind of explore some of what they do. I don't work with this company at all. I just think it's kind of interesting that they've created this Power BI integration. You can kind of read about it a little bit more if you'd like. All right, but once you go ahead and fill in your information, they will send you a link to actually download and instructions on how to use it. So you can expect an email to come directly to you. Once you get that email, you can then take what is downloaded, the Power BI visualization file, and start to use that inside of the Power BI desktop. So let's actually show where we would go from here. So uh, in this case, we're actually going to use a data set that we've already used previously. It's the NFL data. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel. And we're going to be pulling in the NFL data that we did a few modules previously. And I'll go ahead and hit Open. And we're going to bring in this offense data from the NFL. So we're comparing all the different odds offenses and of different NFL teams across many years. And we'll load this in. And once we get this loaded in, we'll then go ahead and take a look at the visual itself. So I'm going to expand this a little bit here and hit the little import file option underneath the visualizations pane to import the narrative. And I'll import it here and select import again. And underneath the area where I've downloaded most of all my data visualizations, I'm going to select the narratives for Power BI and hit open. That's going to now bring this into the Power BI desktop. You'll see the icon appear right here and we can start to use it. Now again, basically what the narrative does is it writes out a story about your data. So I have all of this information about NFL offenses. If I want to write out some information about these, these stats that I have, I can either bring in other visuals aside, alongside with this, or I can just click on the narrative by itself, maybe make this take up a much larger interface uh, part of the screen here, and then I can plug in some of the columns and the fields that I have inside of the visual. Now you can see you have two different field types you can plug in. You have dimensions and values. Dimensions are going to be more attributes or descriptive fields. Values are going to be your metrics. And so what I'm going to plug in here in this scenario is I'm going to place in here the year as a dimension. I'll bring in the team also as a dimension. And then let's bring in something like the total points as a measure or a value here. Now you'll notice whenever you do this, you, uh, as soon as you pl plot in something here for the value section, it asks you what type of value is you're trying to describe. 
Is it a discrete, continuous, percent of whole, or a scatter plot? And really the big two things here that, that a lot of people get confused by are discrete versus continuous. You can kind of think of discrete as a, a, a limited number of values. And they give you an example here where you're trying to see sales by a product versus continuous is something more like sales by month. You have months that are kind of endless. You have so many months to think about how much time, how much you've sold across time. It could be very, almost an endless amount of values that could return back here just about depending on how long your organization has been around. So uh, we're looking at more of a continuous value here because the total points can be very random. There's not something that's a set number of points that we would have for each of our teams and for each year. So this is more of a continuous value, whereas a discrete value would be something where you're always going to have something like one, or one, two, three, four, or five. It's a very low number of values. Continuous is much more random, I should say. So we'll hit write a narrative, and you'll see it actually writes out some text here for us. And it's actually doing some in interesting analysis here. You see it takes a couple seconds, and by the way, after you make changes to this, it takes a few seconds to make those changes. But you can see here it's giving us some information that an analyst might write. The average of total points was 349.98 across all 32 entities and across all 14 periods. That's the number of years. I have 14 years in here. The 32 entities, that's 32 teams, did not all move in a similar direction from blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of read in here. It, tell, it tells you that the Carolina Panthers were rising most years, whereas the San Francisco 49ers were falling the most. So you get some interesting analysis here. So not only will it give me information by year up on the top here, It'll also give me information about the individual teams that it found interesting facts about. You can also kind of resort the dimensions here. So if I move year below team, it'll give me some different kinds of information in here. I'm actually going to revert it back, but you can see what kind of information it gives you when you resort those. So now it's giving me information more specific to the years as opposed to the teams, although you still do see information about the teams up top. I'm going to place that back where it was a moment ago. I'm going to put year above teams again. And then let's take a look at some of the other things that you have available in here. One of the things that you'll notice is underneath the format paintbrushes, there's not a lot here for narratives, but if you expand narratives, you'll see that there's a couple things that are interesting. One is you can still flip back and forth between con continuous, discrete, percent of whole, and scatter plot. You can also change the way that this is structured. So right now it's structured in paragraph format, but you could switch this to more of a bulleted list, and it gives you a bulleted list of information about the stats that are brought back here. So you can see here, after a few seconds, it brings us back as a bulleted list instead of a paragraph. I'm going to flip that back to paragraph, though. The other thing that you'll find kind of interesting here is the verbosity you can change. If you want to, right now, whenever it finishes re-rendering re this, this is set to a medium verbosity, but you can make it a higher verbosity, which means it's going to give me more information back, or you can set it to a lower verbos verbosity, which means it's actually going to give you less information. So no notice as I do low, it actually only gives me a little information as opposed to what we had originally. So I'm going to actually make this medium. I thought the medium verbosity was fine. I'm also going to increase the font size here a little bit because it's a little hard to read the way we have it in here now. So I'll bump that up a little bit. Let's say something like 15 or 14. How about that? Now, the other thing that you can do in here as well, uh, I made it 17, by the way. The other thing you can do in here as well is there's a whole other settings area that you can work with up in the top right. If you click on the settings button in the top right of the narrative, you'll find there's several other types of uh, configurations you can do to the narrative. So if I select the settings icon here, you can see that you can actually work with the language a little bit. So for example, if you expand year, you can see that it's trying to identify what is a singular year versus a plural year. Well, I would say a singular year is just a year, and I would say a plural year uh, would, be called a, it would be called years. And you can add some variety if you don't want to continually to say year and years over and over and over. You can add some variety and actually change this so you can have two different other ways that it can refer to year or years. I'll do the same thing for team. Underneath team, you can see it's calling a team an entity, and the plural of teams, it's calling them entities. So I really want to call that a team and teams. And you'll notice as I make these changes that it actually does make those changes inside the narrative itself. You'll notice as you go look at here, you'll see once I uh, give it a few seconds, you'll see now and call, instead of calling them entities, it says all 32 teams, and across all 14 years, it's actually updated those now to be more relative to the data that we have. So that's kind of interesting. The other thing that you'll find here is as you go under things like the characterizations, here you can define how you want to deal with the, the measure that you have, which in our case is total points. You can tell it whether or not this is a number, a monetary value, or a percent. You can also tell it whether or not it's good to have a higher number or bad to have a higher number. I would say that it's good to have more points. 
You can also tell it how do you want to uh, aggregate. Do you want to sum across the dimension values? And yeah, I generally want to sum across the dimension values that I have. So we've made some of these changes here. You can see there's actually a little bit more, and you'll notice now as soon as I change it to sum, it says now so it's showing total points instead of an average of points. So it's really up to you. Do you want to see this as an average of points or a total of points? You can kind of flip back and forth here. I'm going to flip that back, actually back to a not a summed up value, and you'll see here it'll flip back over to an average of points for all the years. All right, then underneath relationships, you'll see if you had more than one value underneath the values section here, I only have total points. But if I had more than one measure here, I can define if there's any correlation between them. So is it kind of an actual versus goal kind of thing? Is it current month versus previous month? You have some, some ability here to map those values if you wanted to. Underneath analytics, if you go underneath analytics, there's a few things you can do here to actually work with com some kind of predictive values here. I'm not going to go, go too deep into that right now. And then underneath display, this is where you can actually highlight the good and bad values in a certain color. So you can see right here, you'll notice that this text was bold. That's because that is either a good or bad change. And so what you can do is you can go underneath the display section here and you can change whether or not a good value is shown in something like maybe green and maybe a bad value is shown in something like red. And you can italicize it or underline it, whatever you want in here. But you can see the capabilities of doing that. Now I mentioned the analytics pane. If I go underneath the analytics pane, if I had some more predictive type values, you can actually see underneath the trend line, you have the ability to work with a percentage or really a confidence level here that you want to adjust for doing predictive analytics here. So there is some things you can kind of adjust here when it comes to doing analytics. My data set just doesn't really support it for this example, so that's fine. I'm not really too concerned about it. But when I'm done with the settings here, I'll click the little X in the top right, and that'll bring me back to our original narrative here where I can kind of view the data. Now, of course, you can actually make this work with other visuals. So if I wanted to bring in something like, uh, let's say, a column chart here, and I want to see the teams, and let's see the total points for teams. And I can, of course, select certain values here. You'll notice Los Angeles Rams is really low because there's only one year they've been Los Angeles Rams in this data set. But I can select that, and it can give me an analytics just on the items that I have selected. And if I highlight a couple of them, it'll give me uh, some analysis just on the ones I have selected. All right, now a couple things I want to review with this, just because it is pretty important here. You do have a limited amount of data that can go into the narrative which I believe is about 10,000 rows that you can fit into this. You'll also note here one thing that some people don't like is they do have a little branding here. You can see Powered by Narrative Science is brought on the bottom of the narrative visual here. One little trick that I see some people like to do is they'll actually put a little rectangle or something over that and make the rectangle white so you don't even know it's there. That's one little trick you can do if you really don't like that. You have some flexibility. You can kind of adjust there if you'd like. And then, of course, you can come over here and change the fill color to just make it white and then make the outline also white, so or make the outline nothing if you wanted to. So there's some little tricks you can do. If I brought this forward here, this would work a little bit better, but you kind of get the idea. There you go. Now I can't see that it's powered by narrative science. I'm sure they would really not be happy about that, but I get, you get an idea of how this works. Um, one last thing, again, it's worth mentioning again, is that this information is sent over to the narrative science servers. So if you have some kind of sensitive data and your organization is very careful about that, you should be aware of that, that it does get sent to them for them to be able to do this analytics. Also, the other thing to note here is that it only sends the information, or at least what they tell you is it only sends the information that shows up in the story itself. So the narr narration that you see here, this is the only information that is sent to them according to their FAQ and many uh, forum posts that I've seen for about that. So that's really it for this one. It's an interesting way to, to kind of work with your data and be able to visualize more of an analyst type uh, story about the data as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. A little bit off track, we went uh, from looking at the more traditional ones to one that I had on my list that I wanted to talk about for a while. And I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.